So I started meditating when I was around 19, and there was really two main things that drove me to, to want to meditate. One is I was just very curious about the mind. I've, I'd always been kind of curious by nature, and um, I love to read, I love to learn things, and I was especially just curious about my own mind. But the really, the main thing that, that got me interested in meditation was that I was having a lot of anxiety uh, at the time. I'd had some anxiety when I was a teenager, but when I got to uh, college, um, university, I was completely overwhelmed, I was stressed out, and in particular a lot of the social situations I found really challenging. So that was really the, the main thing that got me started meditating. So there's now been a lot of research that's been done on meditation, and um, the first thing to say is maybe that there's actually many different kinds of meditation. And the research is showing that they affect the brain in different ways. So depending on the kind of meditation, it might actually kind of activate different networks in the brain. So the most, most of the research to date is on what we might call mindfulness meditation, which is simply learning to be fully aware and fully present to what's happening uh, in the moment. Um, and there's still a lot of questions about what's going on in the brain but it seems that it tends to activate regions of the brain that are involved in what we call self-regulation. So these are parts of the brain that uh, are involved when we, for example, have a goal and we want to work towards that goal, or when we regulate our behavior, when we are able to pay attention on purpose. So essentially you could think of this as uh, parts of the brain that help us to be more in charge of our own mind versus just habits and the conditions of our lives dictating how we experience things. Yeah. So these days um, there's a lot of scientific interest in the topic of well-being and in particular the, the well-being of the mind, what we call uh, psychological well-being. So this has actually been a, a topic of scientific research for, for decades, for you know, at least two or three decades, uh, but it's becoming a very important topic these days. And there's a few things that I think are new in research uh, around this topic of well-being. One is that we have a, a greater understanding of well-being as it pertains to the brain. So we start, we're starting to understand better um, what's actually happening in the brain when we experience higher levels of well-being, or when we really struggle and we experience uh, lower levels of well-being. And the other thing that's the big change, even in just the past five years or so, is that there's a much greater understanding that we can learn well-being. So we're starting to understand that well-being is perhaps best thought of as a skill. It's something we can learn, it's something we can actually practice. Yeah, we've done, we have done research on everyone from young kids, four, five, six years old, to adults, soldiers, school teachers, regular people, and uh, it, we've really found that pretty much anybody can benefit from the practice of meditation. When I'm asked what the, the best way to start meditating is and what kind of meditation or how long to meditate, I always say that the, the best meditation is the one that you actually do. So more important than having to do it a very long time or even a specific kind of practice, it's better just to start simple. It can even be five or ten minutes a day. And the most important thing is just consistency, just doing a little bit each day and then slowly building it from there. And ideally applying it in everyday life, so learning to be more aware more present, more attentive in everyday life. So one of the most common misconceptions about meditation is that it's religious in nature. And it's easy to understand why that's the case, because many of the world's religions do have meditation and different contemplative techniques. But you can just as easily practice meditation if you're an atheist or you're agnostic or whatever your cultural or religious background is. It's really just a practice of, of training the mind and even caring for the mind. <laughs> 